Hello, uh, my name is Elizabeth Oakes, and my talk today is titled Altered Consciousness in 1960s American Science Fiction, a Corpus Stylistic Analysis. And it's basically a small piece of my dissertation work. First, I'll describe two styles of portraying altered states uh, that an initial computational analysis uncovered in a corpus of science fiction novels. Then I'll discuss particularly how lexical aspects of each style link representations of altered consciousness to themes of void and chaos on one hand and self-knowledge and interpersonal connection on the other. Next, I'll cycle back to further computational analysis to explore relationships between novels based on the categories of words discussed in the stylistic analysis. And finally, I'll explore some connections between these two ways of representing altered consciousness and contemporary cultural shifts regarding altered states. Here on the slide are the covers of all the novels in the corpus. I'll speak about those in the lower row and the stylistic and thematic groupings they form in a little more detail. All these authors either won or were nominated for a Hugo or Nebula Prize between 1960 and 1969. And every novel contains passages representing some form of altered consciousness, such as a dream, drug trip, or uh, mental illness, madness. I use Colin Martindale's Regressive Imagery Dictionary, the RID, which codes texts based on lexical categories. The RID contains about 3,000 words sorted into a triply nested structure. On the slide, this image shows three different RID categories highlighted in a passage from Fritz Lieber's The Wanderer. You can see the nested structure of the dictionary over on the left. Colin Martindale constructed the RID in correspondence to a number of theories that locate cognition on a spectrum delimited by poles of primordial cognition, which is concrete, irrational, and interior, and conceptual cognition, which is abstract, logical, purposeful, and reality-oriented, according to Martindale. Primordial content shows a marked increase coincident with an increase in creativity in fantastic stories, in the poetry of poets with psychotic symptoms, and in the written output of subjects under the influence of psilocybin. The RID's categorization scheme has consistently shown an ability to quantify the linguistic difference at the lexical level in texts written in and representing altered states. In the initial analysis of the corpus with the RID, two groups of texts emerge. Harrison, Lieber, Dish, and Zelazny increase the primary summary category uh, percentage and the primary uh, summary category uh, is uh, Collindale, Martin Collindale's um, primordial uh, category. So that group of authors increased that primary summary category percentage while decreasing the secondary, which is conceptual um, summary category percentage in altered passages as compared to default. They have a greater primary secondary difference in altered passages than default passages uh, by a large amount, that is greater than five percentage points. And Icarian imagery is an important category for this first group of authors. Dick, Galloway, and Pohl increase the percentage of primary words in altered passages as compared to default passages while keeping the percentage of secondary words about the same. They have a greater primary secondary difference in altered passages than default passages by a smaller amount, so less than four percentage points. This second group of authors also uses similar increases in percentage of regressive knowledge words in altered passages as compared to default.
So what role does the fluctuation of frequency of these categories of words play in creation of styles of representing altered consciousness? And how do these styles relate to themes? With this data in mind, I'll comment on the first group and then do a close reading from the second group. Uh, so Zelazny and Dish portray altered consciousness as a kind of void, while Harrison and Lieber represent altered consciousness through disorder. And both are ways of conceiving of chaos. The altered state of consciousness in this first group of authors uh, speaks to entropy and annihilation at the levels of story, theme, and style. And they achieve their effect through a prolixity channeled into Icarian imagery words uh, of vertical movement and regressive knowledge words of embodied location in horizontal space. And you can see those uh, Icarian imagery words in green and the regressive knowledge words in orange here on this slide. But I'll speak more about the second group. In the novels by the second group of authors, altered consciousness arises from the loss of control resultant of a shared mind space. Uh, in Dick, Galloway, and Pohl's novels, altered consciousness expands the self by first blurring the boundaries between the self and the other. Focalizers generally experience it as initially terrifying, uh, but not necessarily negative, ultimately. Altered consciousness is a gateway to knowledge that enables personal transformation. How do the themes of expanded knowledge and personal transformation appear in style? Galloway styles altered consciousness as a place of perception rather than action but the inward perception of the focalizer's own body is projected outwards onto the environment. So in Dark Universe, uh, humanity has forgotten life on the surface, having moved underground hundreds of years ago after nuclear annihilation. In one of the failed shelters, humans have adapted to surviving in a cave ecosystem in complete darkness. So the passages on this slide uh, come from that novel. In the first passage, the protagonist focalizer, Jared, perceives the surroundings of his telepathic dream state as mirroring the condition of his body. Regressive knowledge, which contains the subcategories narcissism, that's words referring to body parts, and concreteness, uh, those are prepositions and adverbs of spatial location, uh, those are underlined on the slide. And in the second passage, yet later, Jared observes another person while in this state, and regressive knowledge uh, words are again underlined in that paragraph. These words indicate uh, a focus on the bodily. The regressive knowledge words in the opening of the passage describe the location and motion of Jared, but as he runs his hand over the rock, Regressive knowledge words begin to appear um, as describing the location and movement of the natural environment as though it were a living being. Similarly, in the following passage, an old man's body is described using regressive knowledge words, uh, but as the passage continues, these words link and then transmute him into the stone corridor. Galloway uses mainly active verbs and verbal forms in his altered passages, but of the 12 active verbal forms in the first quotation, the focalizer, Jared, is the subject or actor of only four. The other verbs describe actions of the environment. The environment seems continuous with Jared, uh, and yet it acts on its own. Not only does the environment commingle with Jared, but it extends into the physical beings of others. The old man's beard becomes the stone which Jared's hand has been touching. And this circular movement from the body into the environment, into another character, into the environment again, and back into the body, uh, repeats in the altered passages. Although Jared uh, remains the focalizing character, his point of view disperses through his surroundings and uh, both physical and interpersonal. This shift in perspective could be described by Bo Peterson's notion of intentionality. 
When knowledge and perception align with action, a character is intentional and comes across as reliable. Decoupled or misaligned knowledge and action lowers intentionality, uh, creating the sense that something is off, that a character is unreliable or here altered. In lowering intentionality in altered state passages, Galloway and similarly the other authors in the second group disinhibit the ego boundaries of their focalizers, creating a very different conception or lack thereof of self than shown in default passages. In all three texts in the second group, altered consciousness affords a place of personal development. Characters must renegotiate their relationship to the body and the environment, and they emerge with more self-knowledge. Uh, indeed, this connection with a deeper self governs the outcome in all three texts. So these two groupings and their interpretations are based on a few variables. The full data set from the RID, however, has 58 variables. So would using R to perform a k-means cluster analysis on the altered minus default percentage differences for each category for every novel find the same clusters of texts apparent to a human reader in the most salient variables? K-means revealed two main groups with memberships similar but not identical to those reported above. The K-means group seems to show a difference between texts with more literary language, so Zelazny, Dish, and Galloway, who was experimenting with writing a novel that contains normal levels of description without using any language relating to vision, and then more popular novels uh, by Lieber, Dick, Pohl, and surprisingly, Delaney. So interpretive analysis and computational analysis do not fully overlap. However, they support each other in revealing thematic and stylistic relationships between texts. In clustering texts by literary versus popular language, the computational analysis raises questions about the underlying variables related to genre and time. Because I perceive a change in the general tenor of American science fiction around 1964, I'm curious if there are variables that will cause the 60 to 64 and the 65 to 69 texts to cluster. The interpretive stylistic analysis opens some striking relationships between theme and style. Considering how texts group uh, around theme gestures towards possible cultural trends in understanding and representing altered states. Uh, these understandings of altered consciousness are a clear reflection of developments in psychiatry beginning in the 1950s and spilling out of clinics and labs and into popular culture by the end of the 1960s. Both groups of texts echo ideas developed in the early therapeutic work with LSD and also anti-psychiatry's reframing of schizophrenia, particularly the theories of David Cooper and R.D. Lang. Group one, with its fear of altered consciousness as chaos and void, seems to voice a conservative worry about treatments that mimic the disease. Uh, such treatments become a channel for the spread of non-standard consciousness rather than a cure for mental illness. Group two, with its cautious hope in altered consciousness as a point of connection, seems to welcome this spread of non-standard consciousness through new channels. Tellingly, the novels in Group 2 were published in the first half of the 1960s when therapy with LSD or psilocybin was being conducted in controlled settings by professionals and was widely perceived as a promising innovation. The novels in the first group were published in the second half of the 1960s after LSD had become a street and party drug and as the numbers of the visibly mentally ill began increasing in American cities uh, due to deinstitutionalization. Thank you very much.